Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, uh, episode 408. Um, each week um, we meet here to uh, review the answers uh, or the questions and answers and the answers given on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us tonight, we have Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. He's based uh, in uh, Wimbledon, um, in the, the, the centre of um, London, or the centre of the universe. Um, Masataki uh, is uh, a Google product expert on the uh, um, Google AdSense uh, community. Tim Kappa is um, a CEO of onlineownership.com. He's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of uh, London. Uh, he's a Google product expert on the Google My Business community. And David Rosam is a leading internet marketer. He's based in West Sussex. Um, he's in the sunny south of um, the UK. All right, um, let's um, have a look at uh, our first uh, question today. Um, it's from Melanie Rosa, and it's titled, Is adding a sitemap the only thing needed for Google to crawl your site? Um, no, you don't even need a, uh, a sitemap uh, to, uh, to have your, your site um crawled um so yes um if your if your website is set up correctly then google will uh google spider will pot around it um reading all the links and leading the uh, and reading the pages i can't say words um yes and I, I, I actually get a bit annoyed with uh, sitemaps. A number of sites I see that uh, uh, have a sitemap that doesn't actually match up with the, the content of the, of the site. Um, and then we find ourselves going around a, a little site audit um, loop trying to, trying to make this thing work when it doesn't really need to make things work in the first place. And uh, doesn't need to uh, work in the first place. Thank you, David. Anybody else to add to that? No, I think that's a, a perfectly adequate uh, explanation. Let's look at number two on our run list. It's from Ayulia Radu. Um, it, it's titled, Which URL Structure is Better? Uh, Ayulia said, uh, Hi, can anyone advise whether it's better for SEO or search engine optimization? Um, to build the permanent links uh, in this format, um, uh, for example, www.website address slash shop slash product or www.website address slash shop slash product category slash product or www slash, uh, oh, sorry, www.website address slash category slash product. Uh, I tried the last one by changing the permanent links in WordPress, but it made uh, my uh, other uh, pages such as uh, blog and contact us disappear. Um, oh, sorry, did you want to go, Tim? Uh, yeah well so <laughs> it all depends on, on on like but to me ordinarily your category um is yeah so like it depends like you know without looking at your site it depends on what on how you've uh, on how the site's designed um and depends what's in your navigation so a lot of times people would have um 
it called the category, but typically product. So it would be, you know, your category wouldn't be called category, it would be called product. So it could be chairs, tables, um, desks, uh, it, it, do, do you know what I mean? Um, or you could define it by category, but that would be make sense. And then it would be when you click through to the actual product, it would be, you know, it, it would be, so your category would be called or labeled as tables. It wouldn't be labeled as category. So uh, do, do, do you see what I mean? Um, uh, you define you define the structure. Like I would I would not call them categories in my URL. My category would be labeled as what it is: tables, chairs, um, you know, uh, printers. And then it would split out into what you, know, it, you, you see what I mean. So it would be tables. Then when you clicked on an actual white desk, it would be tables. Then it, that would fall within that category. It would be white, uh, white table, uh, or white wooden table, or and then it would be or it would be forward slash tables forward slash um, stainless steel rolled edged garden table or whatever the case may be but that's how, how you know how i would define it i wouldn't specifically have them as categories um in that sense you know or called it so yeah uh, it depends on how you're gonna yeah i used to yeah. understand it better with pink fluffy elephants yeah i was a bit disappointed that they didn't uh, make a make a, uh, an entrance during that um anyway um my thoughts um yeah it, it does it depends it's the it's that answer isn't it it depends on how many products you've got what are what they are etc etc but the um the thing that uh, strikes me is um i tried the last one changing the permanent links in WordPress, but it made my other pages such as blog and contact us disappear. If you've got your website up and running and it has been spidered, I would say don't touch it. Um, if if it's working, don't touch it. Um, if you're talking about um, in the kind of abstract, which is better on, on a uh, on a website, it depends on the nature of the website, the size of the website, and the and the products they're on. Um, so yes, but certainly if you've got a a website that's up and running and spidered, um, don't worry about this. Just leave it, leave it alone, um, because you'll get yourself in all kinds of poo. Thank you, David. Before we move on, I'd just like to point out people like Michael Stricker and uh, Ryan Jones, who uh, um, devote uh, time and energy to uh, answering questions as soon as they land in our, our, our community on, on Facebook. Um, and make um, WCA questions such a valuable resource and their contribution is so much appreciated. Let's roll on to number three on our run list. We've got nine questions tonight, six to go. Um, far as uh, Ahmed said, uh, in SEO, rankings are rented. Changed my mind. Well, why would we change your mind? Because they never permanent. So um yeah we just move on to the next question for us now <laughs> it is rather cryptic isn't it yeah 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 but yeah no uh well i mean it depends how you determine like rent it uh there is a lot to it it depends on what the space is it depends on what the query is I mean, I could go and create uh, a page now on my site, XSDFG, HJKLMNOP, QWZDEFA, 
DDT Pink Fluffy Elephants, and I will forever rank for that. So in that instance, it's not rented. That will always rank for that query forever and a day, position one. So it's not quite true, but uh, it depends what the query is for. Okay. All right, let's um, call it an answer for number three and let's roll on to number four in our run list. Uh, another one from Perez Ahmed. Um, he said that Moz spam score is so high, does it matter? And he said, suggestions needed. My friend bought a new domain, but the Moz spam score is 55. Why so high? What are the possible reasons? I'll answer and say that um, Moz is, 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 is a company that's able to take a wild guess, just like any of us. Um, and uh, it's called a Moz Spam Score. There's plenty of um, people about um, applying numbers, but they're just uh, notional uh, numbers. Um, they're, nobody could ever prove that, that they're, they're um, based on anything. Well, they do list 27 signals that they use according to their website and I don't think some of them are really good approximation I don't think they're good measurements to be honest in my view yeah all right we're happy with them that for uh, Faris Okay, let's roll on from Melanie Rosa. Um, can PLR, PLR, what's wrong with my head? Why can't I, I break up this acronym? PLR. Private label rights, as Michael Martinez reminds us. <coughs> okay, can these articles rank on Google? Now, I, I need to remember what private label rights are. You buy a load of content and then republish it. That's that's it, isn't it? With PLR, it's one of those very old-fashioned things that I've long since forgotten because my brain doesn't go far, doesn't go back that far. Um, but the the key point here is that they they're not likely to be very. Uh, high quality content for for one thing um you you buy something in from outside that's not written for your your site then um it's not going to be particularly uh, a good fit between your your website your business um and for your uh for your customers um yes they can rank on google as uh, as tim suggested last uh, uh, answer anything can rank on Google it depends you know what or how um, you can you can do something obscure and get it to rank one uh, you can put something of low quality on and it can rank on page 500 um, so is the answer should I buy PLR um, articles um, for my website, um, the answer is no. Thank you, David. Uh, and equivocal no. All right, let's um, roll on to number uh, six on our run list. Mu Muaz Chaudhry um, asks a question titled, can someone suggest to me uh, how to choose um, the best domain. 
um, for a new site. He said, I have two domains. Um, I don't know what we can say to uh, viewers. Um, choose the most memorable of the two. Um, choose the one that fits with uh, your your proposed brand, your proposed business um, most effectively. Uh, don't worry about um, uh, about key phrases and keywords. Um, well, you know, there's a, there's an, an argument for choosing the short of the two as well. So uh, I think so, Muaz. I think you, you you're totally like forgetting the whole thing of luck about a new site. You look at you look at any predominant new sites out there today and over 60 percent of their traffic comes from branded queries um you know if you want uh viewers coming back they need to know your you, you know know your brand so creating some long asked domain name you know is ridiculous you know it it's it, you know think about the brand however by you asking how to choose the best domain for a new site leads me to think this is just like for AdSense or something. It's not like a legit new site that you want to create. Um, <laughs> whereas your readers aren't actually going to be faithful readers. It's just literally going to be <sighs> clickbaity kind of stuff. Um, <sighs> Even in that instance, you know, if you're creating a site which is either not necessarily a mainstream site, but something that's going to have some kind of angle to it, just creating another new site out there is not going to do anything. Um, you know, whether it's a satirical kind of new site, whether it's slightly skewed in the political, you know what I mean? I don't know, whatever angle it has. I still think at the end of the day, if you are trying to create a legitimate news site, uh, most of it is branded queries coming back to it. Um, and therefore, you know, what, what's the name of the blooming newspaper or media outlet that you are? That's what it should be, the name. Don't try and get clever with this. Don't try and overthink it. Thank you, Tim. All right, so let's um, head on down to number seven on our run list. It's from Josh Linton. It's titled Two Sites, Same Content, Different Countries. He said, I have two sites for two different countries. And Michael Fisher Kirshner is joining us. Um, he said, both sites uh, are the same, uh, just aimed at different countries. Um, they have very similar content on the landing pages. Uh, is this a bad thing for the site's um, search engine results page results? Hey, Micah. Hello. Okay. You're looking well. Feeling well, thank you. Is Prince Harry going to be working uh, anywhere near you? <laughs> I don't know. I honestly don't know. If you spot him, slap that ginger twat for me. Tell him you can fucking keep him. Don't want him back here. Lazy ass. Not <laughs> bad. Uh, hey, he's just getting out while he can. <laughs> keep him, mate. He's not even English. You know, he's not even royal, man. I, I, I mean, the Queen should just come out and let him know who his real dad is, man. Well, guys, um, um, I think that the the, um, uh, the the two two sides um, being the same. Um, it, it, it's 
uh, I don't know. It, it, it's it's not going to to be uh, bad for anything. It, it's just um, somebody help help me out here. Well, yeah. I think so, that's, oh, good. Oh, right. um, the way to look at it, it's 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 not helpful. Um, <clears throat> so the content, like, so it's so. All right, the way to look at it is essentially it makes it difficult for Google to determine which site uh, should show up for which country. Um, <clears throat> it's basically a form of duplicate content. And it's, you're, you're basically just confusing the bot to, to be able to show. Um, so that's, that's gonna be the, the most, quote unquote, bad uh, thing. It's not that it's a penalty or anything like that, but it's more of the confusion side of it. And you wanna make sure that the content is actually sufficiently different as, as that will help Google understand which content should be for which country, assuming that you know, you've you've also done additional settings to specify that being the situation. That's essentially kind of the uh, thing to, to be keeping in mind um, at, almost at any time when when the content is going to be so very similar. Fantastic. Yeah, and I think sort of as Richard indicated in the answers. You know, um, setting up hreflang is probably the best thing to do. Um, the two country domains, the sites on two um, country domains, Ireland and Malta. And I assume they're both in English, so, you know, um, it'd be en slash ie and en slash mt. Um, and both, si uh, both sites will self canonicalize yeah, just be mindful that HF ring generally is second to whether or not the content is duplicate. Um, at least if it's within the same language set. So um, putting in the HF line can be helpful to make it a little more clear, but the duplication will probably still take priority, and so it still will need to be uh, unique. Yeah, I think... Mm. I suppose it's really the same site, um, and the only difference. Uh, my understanding of the question is that the the content pages, if you like, are the same. They're you know, absolutely the same, um, both on the Irish side and Maltese side. Um, the landing page is different, probably because there are um, different information, sort of contact number, address, that kind of thing. Um, so, um, you'd expect if you, if someone's searching for this site in Ireland, the Irish version would turn up and they, if you're in Malta, then the Maltese version would turn up probably without, even without a chef Yeah. It, with different content. Yes. With similar, um, it gets complicated. Uh, you'd, you'd think that the CCTLD or the HRS frame would be sufficient prioritization. Um, it doesn't necessarily happen that way. Uh, part of it is the, com the confusion that stems from it. Part of it is if Google thinks people are, don't really care enough and they just want something that has what they expect. Um, I've been in situations where Google confuses uh, one language country for another, even though we've set set H for Lang, and it's really comes down to like you're creating confusion to the pot for which one it shows. If on individual pages, when the content is fundamentally the same, um, if you're talking about contact pages and things that are, let's say that's sufficiently different, then you're fine. But it, it really comes that that similarity of content is you're making your life difficult uh, when that occurs. Yeah, and another thing that sort of pops into my mind is, in this case, the two countries in question, uh, Ireland and Malta, which aren't exactly the largest, you know, most populous places um, in the world. And, you know, if the search, if and given the volume of searches in English that takes place in 
so many places and in big countries like the US, like Britain, how would that play into sort of these smaller markets? Okay. Right, let's um, wrap this one up and move on to the next, unless anybody has an objection. Okay. Question eight on our run list. Help me decide what kind of page I should use. It's from Tyler Marin, who goes on to say, uh, the company is mentioned in the press a lot. I would like to highlight on a media page uh, on the website. Um, what are the best practices on this? Uh, thoughts are um, a static page with the date, title and logo of publication. Link out to that site. Um, potentially, um, a no, no follow link. B, a copy the press mention into a blog and add a blog category called media. Um, serve that category page as the press page. Um, do you guys have any insights? Actually, all, all of you could have something to say there, I think. Yeah, so I would probably think it would just be to have a singular press page. Um, you know, and you can do it in, in, in a lot of ways, which is makes it nice to the user. You know, you could have um, blocks, so you could just have the logo of whatever the particular media outlet is. So just say, for example, uh, a logo of The Guardian, a little drop down thing, and it just shows you uh, the title uh, and then linking back to that particular article that was in The Guardian, this date, this date, this date, this date, you know, a little drop down. So it, at least it's nice for the user. Um, and it, you just send it back, you know, to, to, to that article. I don't think you need to you know, follow it in that sense because they typically should be linking to you or at least, you know, you're just, you're just creating, you know, you're creating, um, you know, a, a, a nice connection for, for sites, but, you know, linking out from that press page is not going to, you know, a singular page is not going to be a problem. Um, you can de develop and make them look really nice depending on how you ever want to do it. Uh, I mean, you can literally even do an HTML, <laughs> like in the sense that, yeah, it won't be pretty, but you could just have, boom, the name of the, and then just like bullet point, bullet point list on what was featured in that particular uh, publication. And it saves you having to just create a whole lot of mess. You just keep it nice and tidy and people can see, right, uh, we were mentioned in this publication, X, Y, Z, next publication name, X, Y, Z. You know, um, but you can do it. I wouldn't recommend going down the road of creating a blog article that then mentions it and then links it back to that because why? You've already been mentioned in that and people should, in theory, be coming back to you from the press article. Why do they then want to read about that press article to then click to the press article to then come back to you? That just makes no sense. Um, yeah. So if you if you wanted to mention them, just stick it on a press page. Excellent, Tim. Now, any any other answers on this one? Well, the Tim's wasn't an excellent answer. I just thought that there might be some others. All right, so let's move on to our last question for tonight. This one is from Shirai Shah. Um, it's titled Optimizing the Meta Title. Um, she goes on to say, um, Optimizing the Meta Title, it does uh, target keyword need to be an exact match? For example, my target keyword is the CBD isolate tincture, um, which um, has a higher search volume. And the keyword in the metal, meta title, um, keywords in the meta title are CBD isolate mint tincture. 
as my client product name is the same. And so I've placed the keyword as the uh, original product name um, in the meta tag. Goodness. Okay. Uh, well, so I just want to go back there. Your actual domain name is CBD Isolate Mint Tincture. Is that, is that, did she just say that? Or did Jim just read that? I'm like, what? Uh, no, anyway. I, I, I think uh, I think you just invented it. Jim. It's not already there. Oh my god! Okay, sorry. Did I just invent that? Because I was going to go. Yeah, you don't want to well, be my creating. <laughs> my target keyword is CBD isolate tincture. Oh, uh, I think there's so, I think there's a big, a, a massive dollop of overthinking here. Um, yeah, this is mental. Just, like, like, like. Sure, uh, sure, uh, sure, uh, Listen, yeah, you're totally overthinking this, man. Like, I'm li literally looking at CBD isolate mint tincture. There's like not, there's less than half a million potential search results. Like, uh, I'm sorry, but you literally create a lot of you. I don't even know what the mint tincture is, but literally one page if you called yourself cbd tinctures literally your home page properly optimized then your actual product which is the cbd isolate mint tincture that is the actual name of the product you probably have different milligrams but that should be in your product page itself then 20 or 30 things around uh content around cbd uh cbd tinctures uh different herbs being used mint da, 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 like 20 or 30 pay, like like literally there's less than half a million like dude come on like and and you literally worrying about a title here man this should be done in a day and you can do that just with some decent stuff around it wow this stuff is ex oh no hang on that's hong kong dollars Jeepers, I was looking at this price, you have 580 bucks, and then it's Hong Kong dollars. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, listen, you're totally overthinking this. But yes, if that's the name of that product, that is what the product should be. You know, the URL, CBD Isolate, ideally, CBD Isolate Mint Tincture. Um, if you've got ad additional products, you probably call them under CBD, and then it would be CBD isolate mint tincture. But you know, I, I, I without looking, I don't exactly know uh, how people, you know, can break it down. But look, I'm looking at position one for me, and it's not even in that kind of thing. It's literally nested under shop, and then 750 milligram. CBD isolate mint tincture is their URL. Uh, the next one is CBD ice 350 milligram. So like literally it makes sense. Just do it that way. Don't overthink this. Um, a lot of them are under products or shop, things like that. But yeah, you know, that would be in the name and the URL of that, of that particular product page. But mate, less than half a million, you could have this done in a day just you know get that content sorted okay all right well look it's um that time again it's thank you for watching time